You know, with most people with CRPS, they should like they should they should be on the diet for like a month, and then they should let it rip for one or two days and see how they feel, and then they'll see what a difference it makes. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I my the love of my life at the time invited me on a trip to Thailand, and I couldn't. You couldn't come. I couldn't sit in a car for 15 minutes. Yeah, so no, no way to follow her. And no. She was gonna, well, she said, I'll pay for your everything. And I was like, you know, wow. And I couldn't you imagine. She was going to pay for everything. She was a Miss Russian finalist. And I couldn't go. And then That's she true. got pregnant because she took somebody else because she's like, what a, you know, this guy can't even travel. We've been together for two years at that point, though. Long story. Anyway, and she got pregnant, and that, that I was like, at that point, I was like, yes, it, it, it was uh, like a knockout, you know, by a boxer. Yes, uh, for you, and then you actually didn't want to live anymore. No, and uh, and you asked me, may I say that? Yeah. You asked me to send you all the uh, papers, uh, all the uh, Unterlagen, the, yeah. the uh, letters I have written about you. Uh, um, and uh, you want to go to Switzerland Assisted and kill, kill yourself yeah. um, in a suicide yeah. uh, legally. Yeah, assisted and, suicide. Uh, yeah, assisted. And, uh, and I said, wait a moment, just give me another chance. Hey there, my name is Chris, and uh, I'm here today to tell you about a 20-year CRPS journey. Uh, a lot of what I learned in those 20 years, uh, how I went from being a suicidal wreck to now being able to hike in the hills and uh, hills around here, four to six kilometers without a problem, four kilometers without a problem. I'm still working on building that up every day. Um, and uh, you know how I went from my absolute lows you know, like losing my the, the love of my life at the time because I couldn't even sit on a plane anymore. I couldn't even see, you know, I, when I took the train from here to Paris, about four hours away, I had such pain I had to lay down uh, in first class because I couldn't, you know, I bought the first class tickets to have more space and my, my girlfriend was with me and I had to lay down. I was in such pain, I couldn't, you know, this couldn't even be bent anymore. I had to be straight all the time. You know, and that was standing was, you know, about the only way I could function. I, I'd lay down or stand. It's going to depend a lot on, on you, on, on your diet, on your rehabilitation, um, and uh, I hope it puts you on your path to, uh, to, re to recovery and improvement because I know where you're at. You know, I, for years I felt like I had a vice on my head crushing, crushing my brain with depression. I don't even know how to explain that, but that's what it felt like. So anyway, uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, the video continues now. Of course, at, at work, I would tell some people, I mean, I've got this horrible problem. And they, uh, so they would say, oh, just ignore the pain and work through it. And I was, I was like, this is, this is not regular pain. And everybody with CRPS will know what I'm talk, talking about. People who've never had it. Uh, and, and, and Cindy, I know, you're, you've got, you know, your uncle had it, your son had it, but you'll still never understand. <laughs> So, um, and then I just, like I'm saying, the fire that was in my foot wouldn't, wouldn't go away. I couldn't even put a, a, a blanket over the top of my foot. I couldn't put a yeah. sheet over the top of my foot. Yeah, well, I remember that. I used to have the same problem. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. They, they never diagnosed it. Um, that was 2013, I got the screws removed. Um, so there's no screws in my foot now. And, but that fire. That incredible heat that goes into your foot. No. Which is crooks, which is crooks, which I learned. Mm. Um, it was severe. Mm. I, was, I was getting in tears every morning trying to get out of bed. Oh. It was, it was horrendous, mate. And then even to the point of thinking suicide. So it sounds like you had, you might have had it since 2000, actually. Yeah, I did. I asked this, I asked this patient, other than the surgery and the injury, um, what, what else is, what could possibly be wrong with my foot? They had no idea. They just put me on these high medications of, uh, what was it, everything to the Agapentin. Yeah. And Boltar and the things, those pills were no good for me. I didn't side effect on them. Yeah. I 
uh, you know, just getting paid, so I had to pick some, so I threw them away. Yeah. Luckily, I turned up here at Cindy's place, and she just happened to say, hey, you've got the same symptoms as boys, and you need to go on this diet. Yeah. And I'll tell you, after six months on this diet, I didn't walk. Yeah. I could dance. Wow. I could push the accelerator down on my on my car, you know, I could push down with my, with my right, right leg, right ankle. Wow. I could do things that I could never do. Wow. You know, with most people with CRPS, they should like they should they should be on the diet for like a month, and then they should let it rip for one or two days and see how they feel, and then they'll see what a difference it makes. Um, oh, I the difference it makes is I got my life back. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't long. It's not going to kill you. It improves your your well-being. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, I really am so happy to hear that. That's amazing. I haven't gotten to meet. Uh, you know, it's great that I can actually meet. You know, you now finally because you know, Cindy's written me so often about you. Wow. I'd love to stay in touch with you. And so, how's Dil- how's Dylan? He's alright. He hasn't had any problems since it's gone. It's gone. Really, I remember I told you I was I, I was like, well, you know, if he stops, you know, if he if he eats, you know, the wrong CRPS diet again, or if he doesn't move a lot, I was worried it would come back maybe, but it's still gone. Hey, whatever he likes. Now. Wait, how long has your son been in remission now? How, how long has your son not had problems? Seventeen now, so five years. Five years, wow! I'm so glad. I, you know. Like I said, I wish I would have had that book when I when I was diagnosed. It would have made my life so much easier. And and I think that yeah, we wouldn't have picked the book. And I'm so glad you wrote it. We need it. Yeah. I need to get that information because we really needed to know that. Yeah. We need to find out what is it. You know, I've never even seen the, the most of that stuff in in that book. I haven't seen in other places. You know, I just haven't seen it. it somehow I, but you know, I have to say this. About half of it came out of Dr. Gurman's mind, half of those ideas, and then half of them came out of mine in, in 20 years of experience with the, with the illness. Well, you know, it would be difficult to know with one, with, you know, if it were just your son, it would be difficult to, to be 100% for sure. But the fact that your, that your uncle also did this, and he, after, after having it for 10 to 20 years, you know, that's, that's another, it, it shows, you know, it's like, wow, okay, yeah, so, you know, that, it's clear that that really helps. Uh, so anyway, so I wish you both a lovely, lovely day, and I thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me, and uh, I hope this helps other people. I do need to, I, you know, when, hearing this again, I realized I need to actually sell the book again because people have, they have to hear it. They have to hear it because there's so much desperation, so much desperation out there, suicidal desperation. Yes, desperation. Because I was desperate. I thought this. My son's life can't be over with suicide disease. I know. That's what they said. Otherwise, no one had. Yeah. I just thought, no way. It's too young. Yeah. I'm so glad. You know, I'm the right hand to get it. And it was the best $20 download that you know, I ever done. Out of all the things we got, yeah. it was the best thing. Wow. That's, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm really so happy to hear that. That's great. And I'm really. What? Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. I. I, it's talking to you both makes me realize I need to get this out there again. Fantastic. Get it out there again. Hi there, my name is Chris, and I'm here to tell you the story of uh, 20 years of my CRPS and. Uh, how I narrowly escaped death three times, you know, of course, not because CRPS is, uh, is uh, fatal, but because I was so depressed that, you know, I was so close to killing myself because of this uh, horrible disease that I've been, li- you know, that I've been living with since the year 2000, right? So uh, I was uh, 33 when I, when I got it. And... Um, and you know, yeah, I guess the what really 
got me to the point where the closest was very surreal was, you know, was when my, the woman who was at the time the love of my life, um, who I really wanted to marry, and uh, she lived in another town and we were going, we'd been together for two years and um, she invited me on a vacation to Thailand and uh, that would have required a 12 hour flight for me. And you know, at that time, I couldn't even sit in a car for 15 minutes. You know, I'd lost my job. I was on the verge of losing my job because I couldn't drive to see my students anymore. I was teaching English here in Europe. And, um, and, uh, and she wanted me to be in a plane for like 12 hours. And I, was, and I just had no clue how that was going to work. And, uh, and I said, wait a moment. Just give me another chance. Yeah, remember, I remember that. that. I do. <laughs> and uh, I said, I have uh, stopped giving ketamine. Yeah. And I found out by chance that memantine, which is an NMDA receptor antagonist 2, mm. not that strong as ketamine, in a higher dosage as usually given, mm. uh, can do the same. Mm. And you can take the memantine. Uh, you can continue without being becoming dependent on it. Right. Uh, Memantine, without yeah. becoming dependent. Yeah. Although it loses its effect, I thought after uh, a while. It, it uses the effect after a while, mm -hmm. or is but not it's not like strong. It. But uh, you, it, it's not a drug like like uh, opioid yeah, or so, right. or heroin or so, uh, and and ketamine as such too. You know? right, right. right. So about a month later, she wrote me from on, on vacation, and you know, and I figured out she was with somebody else. And um, and uh, at that point, I just wanted to kill myself, and uh, it was pretty terrifying, you know. Now that I th when I think back on that time period, it's you know, I, just it was it was horrible, and uh, you know, I I've I've been you know with this with this treatment. You know, I have to. I'm, I'm telling you, you chronic this. I'm telling you chronic sufferers this as well as people who have it you know just been diagnosed you know I've I've done so many different types of treatments in, in different cities you know and nothing really helped uh, you know I, I was in Miami when this all started um, I was I flew to to Europe to see people this is the year 2001 or 2000 um, I flew to Europe to see people who had uh, published studies on the problem. You know, I was in Venice, I was in, well, not Venice, I was in Udina, Italy. I was in Freiburg, Germany. I was in the Netherlands. Um, I, I made the mistake of being around my, <clears throat> around my family who insisted that I try something that made things worse, much worse. Um, and, um, you know, when I was in Europe, I, you know, for about a year I thought I was better after I, I took a bunch of medications from a doctor in Miami. And, uh, um, so I thought I was, uh, yeah, it's all kinds of stuff there. I think I was taking like six different medications, you know, I felt stoned, uh, with lots of Neurontin, you know, but at the end of that year I was better. Although I think now that what made me better at that time was the massive rehabilitation that I was doing because I played squash, or not squash, racquetball at the time, three times a week. And uh, I, because I was like, oh, I gotta move, you know. And uh, at the end of that year I was better. Then I moved to Europe and I didn't play racquetball here and I had a bunch of bad food um, that now I know is really bad for CRPS. And uh, I put that in my in the C CRPS survival guide, which uh, you'll find a link to in the video in the, below the video here. And uh, you know I didn't know this, but at the time I was having you know lots of bread and and pretzels, and I was having beer three times a week, a beer three times a week, yeah, because I was in southern Germany, and you know, and young people drank a beer when they went out, you know, f to meet their friends, and um, and I was young then. 20 years younger almost and uh, uh, and then I was you know having lots of coffee and you know and so with anybody a year I had it back pretty badly and um, with all these things combined 
and nobody, you know, knew what to do to help me. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I think we, you know, we, we, I've done blocks, you know, the, in the spinal column, you know, along the spinal column. I've, uh, we, we, I've tried, you know, at least four different kinds of electrical stimulation, some of them very expensive. You know, this, uh, a couple of years ago, I was in a place, um, it, and I'm sure we paid $14,000 for a special kind of electrical stimulation and rehabilitation thing that, you know, it helped with the muscles and the muscle size, but it didn't, um, it didn't deal with the pain. You know, I've, I've been to, uh, I've been to uh, Scotland for their hyperbaric oxygen chambers because I found out that you could do them really cheaply compared to everywhere else. Uh, I uh, was, I've done neurodronate infusions in Verona, Italy. Uh, I was in the hospital in Kiel, uh, although that turned out to be just a complete, just waste of, total waste of time. Um, how many times have I been in the hospital for this? Yeah, I can't even count anymore. Oh, ketamine infusion. I've tried so much stuff. And, uh, you know, so I think I've seen, you know, we're talking about all the stuff we've done. I, I can't believe all the stuff we've done. But, you know, I think I've, I counted once when I could remember all the doctors. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw like 80 to 100 doctors. You know, like in a German hospital, though, when you're in the hospital, mm -hmm. like in the morning, you'll get like five doctors walking yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. I counted all of those. But there were like 100, 100 doctors that I'd seen total for my problem. Then finally about 2008, I got, or 2000, yeah, I got sick of doctors. Even you, I got sick of every, yeah. all the doctors. And, uh, but because now they can't kind of, really, they can't really change your, your, yeah. your, your disease as such. They can't heal you. They can just help you to um, have a little bit less symptoms. Yeah. But that's it. And, and it, it, first it was just in my feet, you know, the first 10 years. And that was bad enough. Uh, and then, you know, I, then I, I met this, this uh, uh, woman and we started dating and um, right about then is when the, the needle, this needle entry point in my groin and my upper leg uh, started to give me problems. It was a 10 year old, you know, situation and it had flare, it had gotten really bad in like 2004, but I decided to rehab it away like it, I, you know, I just thought, okay, that's it. I got because I could, I could barely walk from the sofa to the kitchen and back anymore without, without crushing pain. And uh, so for five weeks in a row, six weeks in a row, I rehabbed like my life depended on it, about four hours a day. Um, and uh, if, at the end of that, I was pain free in my leg again, but it was still in my feet a little bit. But anyway, so 10 years later, eight years later, it comes back again while well, well, I'm dating this woman, probably because I was having, you know, those that things that I said were bad for me. And, um, and uh, so that's when I wanted to kill myself because I couldn't, because uh, I lost her because of that. And so my, my awesome pain doctor from Southern Germany, Dr. Germann, who, uh, he came to me and said, hey, let's, uh, who helped me write the CRPS survival guide? Uh, I said, well, let's try one more thing here. Because I, I asked him, will you write a letter of, uh, a letter requ requesting um, assisted suicide down in Switzerland where it's legal? And uh, he said, Let me, let's try one more thing here. And he, so he put this, uh, what I call polypharmacy 2.0 together. Uh, and uh, that's described in quite some detail in the book. Uh, the CRPS Survival Guide. Um, he, he, you know, and there's lots of important stuff about it. Uh, you know, you don't want to take too much of this, and uh, you know, the certain doses. And it's been about four or five years now since I've taken it, and so I, I don't remember a lot of the details. But uh, you know, just, so like I said, check check out the book for that. Um, and that's really not the point of this now because uh, we've moved beyond that, in my opinion. So polypharmacy 2.0 really helped, and uh, it did put me back on my feet. It gave me a social life again. It allowed me to work again. Um, uh, I had my life back, and I was uh, virtually pain-free a lot of the time. Um, but after like four years of taking, that's when I wrote the CRPS Survival Guide. 
I was like, you know, people have to know about this. You know, there's, uh, it's really important. And I combined that with everything I knew about diet, you know, and, uh, and rehabilitation, and, uh, and, uh, with, and with Dr. Goodman, and a few other things, and, and, and treatments for CRPS, and stuff I'd learned, like, you know, don't use ice. Uh, I, I iced heavily in the beginning with CRPS, and that just... You know, that was just a disaster. You know, like the, the one a really good CRPS specialist I saw, you know, looked at my thermography and said, well, you have ice damage here, you know, in some places on my ankles. So anyway, so I wrote this uh, CRPS survival guide, putting everything I've learned in about 15 years of uh, research and being a chronic, pa you know, patient, CRPS patient in, into there with Dr. Gavon's help. And... Um, and uh, that went on to be a mild success. Actually, you know, I think about 2,000 people bought that. And, um, um, but after about four years, I got tired of, really tired of taking the medications. I didn't have any adverse side effects, although some people do. Uh, Dr. Gunnar wrote about that. You know, he can't, couldn't get all of his patients up to the max of the, the high doses of some of these things that were required, he felt. Um, not everybody tolerated as well as I did, um, but I didn't have any problems uh, with it physically. Um, yeah, well, there was one problem. I, I had problems speaking sometimes. I was stuttering a little bit, uh, but not badly. I mean, people didn't think I was drunk, but I felt like sometimes I was losing, like there was an edit in reality, you know, for a second, and I, and I couldn't remember what I was saying. It kind of overlapped, or I was, you know, so... That was the one little thing that I had a problem with when I got up to higher doses of this medication called memantine. But, you know, every day I was taking those, I felt like I was taking, you know, I felt like I was tasting death. Because I did it for like four years and I was sick of dealing with it. Um, I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. So, uh, I decided to stop taking the medications. You know, plus I had to pay for them out of my own pocket. Uh, insurance wouldn't pay for them. That was like a thousand... 400 euros a month for a thousand six hundred dollars I mean a year a year and um, uh, and, and um, yeah I somehow slowly started to get worse again and uh, had more and more problems walking and you know and, but I had to I was like I had to figure out how to do this without the medications so that went on for about four years of me getting worse and worse and, and things becoming more and more complicated, you know, and on, uh, just to be frank with you, you know, when I, my, when my, with my girlfriends on days after we had sex, uh, I could, I could barely walk anymore. I could barely walk. I could barely even sit, you know, the, when we sat down for breakfast, I could barely even sit for breakfast with them. And when I did, you know, it's the backlash. And as CRPS patients, you know about this. You know, if you move, you know, you almost, part of you almost doesn't want to do the moving because you know that after you do some intense activity, the next day is going to be really bad. So, you know, but I, I learned quite some time ago, if I don't really go after that and keep it up, then my decline will be even, even faster. So I just had to stay on the edge of, you know, of this, this movement and exercise so that, um, you know, keep pushing it, even though it hurt. Because if I didn't, and, and keep take care of my diet, you know, my CRPS diet, then I would decline much more quickly. So, you know, I guess uh, about uh, in November, I still somehow met a wonderful, wonderful lady who really cared for me and was really sweet and accommodating. I don't, but, you know, nobody really ever understands. You know, people can say they understand or try to understand your pain, you know, the terror and the fear of this decline, you know, and knowing there's no bottom with CRPS. There's no bottom, you know. Uh, this constant terror. Uh, you know, she didn't really understand that, but, you know, she was wonderful. And we finally got married in uh, Budva, Montenegro last year in November. But, you know, because the pandemic made things complicated, it's the place where we could meet. You know, I moved out of the city that she was in. We were actually together in the same city for two years. And then I moved out when the pandemic hit and blah, blah, blah. You know, I was in my country, she was in hers again. But we, should, we you know, so we got married in Budva, Montenegro, uh, along the coast there. It's a beautiful place. 
but I was so bad then I could barely walk 400 meters. I remember when the photographer for the wedding said uh, that he wanted to um, he wanted us to move about 400 meters or 500 meters to a different part of the uh, town center, this beautiful old town, and I was and. And I was like, you know, this is, there's no way this will work. You know, at that point, no matter what I did, my leg was instantly exhausted. You know, and, and you know that with the weakness comes the pain. You know, boom, same time. And um, uh, um, so I, I, I just couldn't walk that, you know. It was, and, and sex was very... You know, it was very virtually oh, it was so complicated, and um, and um, you know, I couldn't clean my my house anymore. I couldn't clean. I couldn't bend over. Or I couldn't do anything. You know, I couldn't put the sheets on the bed. I couldn't. I, I couldn't crawl crawl over a bed. You know, on your knees. You know, when you crawl over, you, I couldn't do that. You know, I couldn't do anything anymore. My back was. It was spreading. It was spreading. It spread down into my knee. It was in my. It was and it spread around my side and into my back. And, you know, and I was really desperate at the end of last year because I was like, oh my God, I'm married. I can barely function. You know, this is not working. But you know, I could have gone back to the medications. I just didn't want to do that uh, for a few reasons. You know, also Dr. Gumman said they could wear off. You know, so I didn't believe they were a permanent solution anyway. You know, they, it seemed like they were. A, a good four-year, you know, solution, but he was worried they would might wear off. Um, their effect might wear off. Um, so we sat down. You know, we tried. We tried many things with diet. You know, one of them was um, we tried uh, we tried uh, uh, fasting uh, because it re helps reset the immune system and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I noticed a long time ago that you know low carb diet, not not ketogenic necessarily, but you know when I when I was on a low carb diet and I didn't have easy carbs that I was doing much better, and uh, so you know that was there that that was you know that was there because if I didn't do that if I had a industrialized diet with easy carbs uh, or drinks that had calories, um, I would and and I wasn't exercising I would find myself in a much more rapid state of decline. And then after a month, I'd be like, "Well, this isn't working," and then have to really get back up on things, you know. But still, you know, even though I was trying all that stuff, it wasn't improve. I wasn't improving. Uh, I felt like the core problem was still there, you know. That was, uh, and I just felt like I had to work harder and harder and harder to just kind of keep things together, you know, in my nervous system and my pain. And, um, which really disconcerted me. I was considering suicide again. A lot. And then we decided we did two things. Uh, we uh, he 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 discovered that you can re-regulate the immune system with a high level of vitamin D, and uh, um, and then he also wrote up a list of other vitamins that supplement vitamin D and make it work better and things like this. And um, and then also I was uh, I became more and more interested in the matter of artificial fats. There are fats invented after 1900 uh, that that our bodies just aren't used to. And I started doing you know looking into what doctors had to say about that on the internet. Then I discovered that um, that uh, you know that. that that some doctors who are experts in metabolism feel that they significantly impede uh, the transport of energy in the mitochondria, and that they are also actually, you know, they they feel that when you look at the patterns of disease and the rise of disease, that it actually correlates better with these the rise of these artificial fats uh, than than maybe sugar or other things, and. Um, they presented some very interesting arguments on this, and uh, and I'm I'm very much for an ancient diet now. Anyway, I've been for years because of you know what happened to me. I I realized a long time ago that you know when I have an ancient diet, you know, ancient type diet. Again, that's all covered in the CRPS survival guide, 
you know, and the reasons for it, and um, that I did much better. So then I cut that out. So, you know, and it turned out like with the vitamin D, it takes about a year to a year and a half to re-regulate the immune system. Again, we don't know that CRPS is an autoimmune disease, but there are some interesting hints that it might be. And, um, you know, at that point, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in trying one thing at a time. So, but it's, you know, and, and I'd say about, so that was last year. I, I was married in Budva. This year, uh, these things combined, uh, I think I added the fats, you know, really eliminating these fats from my diet. Uh, and these will be covered in, you know, in detail in the introduction of the, of the, um, of uh, the second edition of uh, the CRPS Survival Guide, which you, the link is for that is below. Anyway, uh, I had I really really hammered that like a starting in April here of 2021, and it, uh, but it's you know it wasn't easy. So you know now I eat a ton of coconut. You know, I noticed that most of the almost all the food that I was buying in the store had this stuff in it. I was overdoing it on on nuts, you know, even, I know that nuts are healthy fats, uh, but I was overdoing it, you know, for, I just, I'd fallen in love with nuts and I was hammering down like a can, you know, four, four or five days a week, you know, one of those big circular cans, you know, nuts. Um, but, so, but that's not really, you know, the industrialized fats that I'm talking about, but it's still, it's still, they're still rich in omega-6 fats, which help fuel inflammation if you have too much of it and um, so that was about April you know and then in even in even in April May uh, May June I was still having problems because I went to St. Petersburg on vacation with my wife and we walked 23 kilometers in, in three days and but it was hell it was absolute hell every step on the third day was hell you couldn't enjoy the city really you know by the third day I, when, I, when I got into a bus, I couldn't walk anymore. I was, I lifted myself around on the seat tops. And, you know, like a person who has polio, um, uh, I was, because my legs weren't functioning anymore. And uh, that was in, uh, that was in May. Uh, but I, you know, just kept to my, the, the, the vitamins and the, the, the oils, uh, you know, working on the, on the correct fats. Um, and uh, and after about May, things started to change. May, June, July, August, what are we now? June, July, August, September, October. We're in November now. And uh, things, it just felt like things started to stick. The rehabilitation that I was putting in was starting to stick instead of being washed away every day. And uh, 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 it was at that point, you know, because I'd stopped selling the CRPS Survival Guide, although I'd gotten some very nice letters, you know, about how it had helped people. And, you know, of course it doesn't, it's not, got, it's not a, ma a magical cure, which is why I never called it the CRPS Cure, called it C CRPS Survival Guide. Um, you know, it's got lists of doctors who you may, maybe should go see, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a doctor. I right away say, you know, you need to, this is not a replacement for a doctor. You still have to go see your doctor as soon as you can. You know, you have to be treated quickly. Uh, but I believe it's a good supplement to what your doctor tells you. Anyway, so I'd stopped selling that after I stopped taking my medications because I got, I, I got worse again. Though maybe that was a mistake not selling it anymore because there's a lot of valuable information in there. Uh, I just didn't feel like, you know, if I was doing worse that I should be selling it. Although I probably should have because, like I said, I've got lots of, I've got lots of nice, supportive letters. You know, people whose kids, they couldn't figure out what was going on. And, and then, you know, maybe I'll get her on, on uh, the one I'm thinking of. Maybe I'll get her on. So I stopped selling it. But now, with this new information and seriously functioning again, you know, I can clean the flat. I, my wife and I can go hiking again. We, we go on, we drive around. I told you, like, I couldn't even be in a car for 15 minutes because for some reason, being crunched up, 
made it all worse, you know, so that it didn't just hurt. No, the next day, the next two, three days, I was sicker. You know, I had redu I, my function had reduced and I couldn't stop that. And now, you know, my wife, when she, when, my wife, we, we can actually hop in the car and go places. You know, I was in a car for eight hours on one day recently and four hours the next. And um, that was great. You know, uh, I walked around uh, cities without horrible pain. And we kept going and going and going. I think, what, 10 kilometers on one day, maybe 12, 11 kilometers. And, um, you know, normally, you know, like I said, even 400 meters a year ago would have been, you know, I couldn't have fathomed four to 500 meters. And now it's 11 kilometers. Now I have to say, when I get up to 11 kilometers, my leg gets tired. Even then it gets tired. But, you know, I can hike in the woods now and go four kilometers without a problem. And, and my leg, my leg doesn't have pain. Yeah. And then the other huge thing was, it was so bad last year, you know, I could barely get through airports. And um, in fact, in fact, in Antalya, oh, in, when, we sw when I switched to Istanbul, I think I actually asked somebody, oh, they, to plane me first, because my leg was so bad, I was having such a hard time, you know, even walking the, it was like a kilometer walk through the airport, maybe a kilometer and a half, it was huge, it, Istanbul airport's huge. And I could, you know, I was, I couldn't even, my leg was so tired and so painful getting through there, you know, and, uh, and now I can, I feel like I can travel again, you know, that's getting up to what? Why are you smiling? Now we can travel, I like it. Yeah, right, she, of course she likes us, yeah, it's a long story. Anyway, so, uh, so, you know, now, now getting through an airport, that's not even a concern of mine, you know, I, I know. Yeah, for also, exam for example, oh, when I went to Istanbul, my, my neighbor took me to the airport, and, you know, as soon as I got there and got out of the car, because it couldn't be even a car anymore, you know, the car would exhaust my leg. And, uh, and uh, as soon as I got out of the car, you know, my whole left leg wasn't working. As soon as I arrived at the airport to, to, to leave for Istanbul, you know, nothing was working. And uh, now, you know, I, I wouldn't even think about getting through an airport. Um, but well, then... We, can, we do three-hour trips on a car mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from see one the, place to another and back. Yeah, and the car yeah. thing. I had we, we I was in a car like a month ago to take you to the airport around Munich. I had to. I was in a car for eight hours that day because take you to the airport, go to the next place. Then you called and her plane didn't leave, so I had to go back and pick it up, pick her up again, and uh, and then we went to Munich to, to overnight. So I was in a car eight hours that day, and then three hours the next day, or four hours almost, because I dropped you off again, then drove down there again, and I functioned, you know, it worked, and my leg was, it wasn't perfect, I got out, it was tired, but imagine, after 12 hours in a car in two days, I mean, that was huge, because I couldn't even deal with 15 minutes in a car anymore. You know, a year ago, I couldn't even, I couldn't even lift my leg like this. I couldn't even lift, these muscles were dead. Well, they weren't dead, they were totally asleep. And they're, they're alive again. And, I, you know, I can do that move now without horrible pain. Although I can still tell I have something in there, you know, when I do that, that particular move. But you'll see in the video, or I'll show you right now, that when I was doing rehabilitation two years ago in, in Ljubljana, I could barely lift my leg. Now, in this example you're seeing here, um, this is already after, like, four days of hard work. Uh, and... And when I showed up there, it wouldn't move at all. In fact, not long after that, I had my neighbor come. And so I did all, I made all these advances there. I did have made advances, but I was, you know, not, there was something about the underlying pain condition that was not improved by that rehabilitation, electrical tre uh, uh, treatment by those specialists, you know, who, who were obviously really good at rehabilitation, but they're not used to dealing with CRPS. But I, I, I would send anybody with a normal sports injury to them. Uh, they're amazing, I think, otherwise. Highly competent people. Anyway, um, uh, but, you know, at, right after that, I came back, and, and all my advances that I made down there were washed away. And then since then, you know, all the stuff we, we tried and supplements, and my, you know, I have this amazing pain doctor, Dr. Goemann. I think he's the best pain doctor in southern Germany. 
you know, the only one that took CRPS seriously, I've been, I've seen so many doctors, um, he's the only one that took CRPS seriously, it didn't make me feel like I was mentally ill, um, and we, um, you know, we've done so much research on diet together and supplements and all that kind of stuff. And he, like I said, he helped me write parts of the CRPS Survival Guide, and he's going to help me expand it now and revise certain portions of it um, and uh, rep republish it. But like I said, at the moment, in the link below, you're going to find the update to the... So the, this update that I've written, it's important. It's not standalone. It's in addition to the entire CRPS Survival Guide, but it's the critical, critical stuff, the critical, critical stuff that we've discovered in the last year that have allowed me to go out and hike again, to, uh, to, to be in a car again, to travel again, to walk through a city again without explosive pain, to, uh, and without medications, right? So you will find Polypharmacy 2.0 in there, but a lot of people, like I said, couldn't get their hands on it. So the doctor, so a lot who, you know, a doctor isn't going to be like, oh, here's four completely new medications for something I, I've never treated before. Yeah, sure, I'm going to prescribe all. No, that doesn't, it's hard to find somebody like that. Even, and even then, you might have to pay for it out of your own pocket. So, like I said, a lot of people had difficulties with that. But even then, it did help me significantly for about four years while I took it. And um, so that's in there fully described. And you'll find also the dietary issues fully described, everything I learned. You'll find certain do's and don'ts with CRPS uh, that I've learned in with my 20 years. You know, I've seen how many, like I said, how many pain doctors have I interviewed about CRPS? You know, I, I saw a Dr. Hushman in Vero Beach, Florida. I know not everybody likes him, but while I was there and under his treatment in 2001, I did improve. Um, and he was a fan of my rehabilitation. And, uh, you know, I got better. And I, at that point, I went back to work. And that's when I came to Germany. And then I just started eating poor, you know, well, poorly, CRPS poorly. You know, I was never a McDonald's person. But uh, CRPS has a very specific diet. There's, but, you know, there's certain things that I discovered over 20 years, you know, that, and Dr. Goemann now, he's, he's like a metabolic expert. He's so into metabolism. Uh, in fact, I might throw up a slide or two of here, his here at his here at some point, or put them in the book. Right now, he's on vacation in southern France and Spain, so it might be difficult to put the slide in. But anyway, he's like a metabolic expert, and he's put all of these, you know, dealing with pain, and he's put all this stuff together about you know how CRPS might be generated and maintained. And uh, you know, of course, we don't know for sure, but but you know, he. When I talked to him about diet, he's like, oh, you don't want to do that because of, you know, this, and omega-6 is bad for that, and he's really amazing. So that'll be in there. That's in there as well. Uh, I've got a list of the better doctors that I've dealt with in the last uh, 20 years. I'm, I'm hoping most of them are still in practice. I'm always collecting these. So when people write me and tell me that there's, um, uh, that there's a great doctor, I, I like to add it to the list. Um, there's a lot of videos on, on, on healthy eating, you know, links to those in YouTube. So, you know, it deals with the, the fats, uh, it deals with, uh, the CRPS Survival Guide deals with the fats, it deals with the vitamins, it talks about what we've changed. Uh, and again, it, it, the introduction is not a standalone document anymore, it's inter or it ever was. The introduction, uh, the second edition introduction is in addition to the entire CRPS survival guide. Uh, and you know, and the other day, and, you know, on, on this channel, you're gonna find, uh, also I'm gonna post the entire one hour interview with Dr. Goemann that I did, where we discuss my entire medical history, my symptoms, why, why I had CRPS, why I have CRPS. You know, he saw most of this stuff when he was treating me in 2004, like the blue skin, the sweating, the excess hair growth. I, I was in the Alps, living in the Alps at the time. In the winter, I was walking around in sandals, loose sandals, because I didn't want anything to touch my feet. And, uh, you know, he saw all that. And uh, so we discussed that. We discussed all the treatments that I went through. Um, you know, we discussed uh, a lot of the things we tried. Uh, we discussed diet, you know, there. So I highly recommend you check that out. 
Um, last time I posted this, a lot of people were like, well, I don't think you have CRPS or whatever. Anyway, so that's one reason I posted this one hour long interview with my former CRPS doctor was because um, uh, I just wanted to help people understand that. And so they knew that, yeah, this wasn't just me sitting down making things up. There's, you know, a real pain doctor. He's the pain doctor. He was the head of pain for a, ger a regional hospital system in Germany. Um, so he knows a lot about pain, you know. Anyway, so, um, and there we have it. You've mentioned in the past that I was your most motivated patient. Yeah. Right, so I've, and I've had so, uh, at least three doctors say that. And, you know, so I took that to heart. And I complete, I, at the time, I almost completely changed my diet. I tried going super low carb. I, I uh, what else have I done? Uh, you know, and, and, oh, you know, I discovered a long time ago, bread is just a disaster. Easy carbs are a disaster. Mm -hmm. The worst things I think a uh, CRPS patient can do is drink coffee. coffee. And I would love to do a study just mm -hmm. to see, because apparently two out of three CRPS patients get better mm -hmm. after two years. Mm -hmm. I would love to know if, that, if the one in three are like me and, are, and love coffee. And, and that helps just, because when I have coffee, the whole thing just collapses. That, you know? that is a very interesting hypothesis. Yeah. This year, we, I changed a few more things. We've added, uh, I added a list of uh, vitamins. I added, including vitamin D, heavy vitamin D. Uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C. Mm -hmm. I also decided that uh, industrialized fats had to go. Anything invented after 1900 had to go. What was interesting to me was, so then, again, late last November, I could barely, I was like 400 meters, I can't believe that. And then, um, and, um, and, but it was after that, you know, I started, you know, and I started to make sure that I got out and I walked twice a day again. Because for a while I'd given up on that. I'd given up thinking that I could influence the decline somehow. But then I got back into it. So you started again to do this treatment, uh, which I call now the Netherland treatment, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but, right but, but remember, I was also struggling, I was also very physically active for a while, and no matter what I did, mm -hmm. I would still be worse a week later. So there, you know, I was still declining, even so though, you, so you, the physical activity wasn't enough yeah. at one point. And, but you couldn't do any more because it oh, was so bad, and you were no, uh, not on any pain medication. I was hiking like four hours a day some days. Yeah, yeah I know, couldn't, you know, Part of me didn't want pain medications, but he's also been willing to provide yeah. me some. And, and again, if you look in my book, you'll find, I think, Paul Far if you look in Polypharmacy 2.0, in that chapter, you'll find some recommendations there. Anyway, again, we're just, I'm just going fast now because we're down to like the last eight minutes here. And so uh, then, amazingly, you know, with these, cha with these changes, that this, that I think that happened mm -hmm. this year with the extra vitamins, with the dropping the fats, uh, with, with working again on the, on the rehabilitation, it was about three weeks ago that my wife visited me again because she lives somewhere else right now. And, but we're going to figure this out, how to live together here soon. But anyway, she came and visited, and she, she's like this crazy traveler. And I was like, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? And I actually managed. And for, for years, I was afraid of cars. I couldn't be in a car for more than 15 minutes. I actually managed to drive around for like a week with her on and off. And then we wrapped it up with a, like an eight-hour trip one day to come down here. And I still functioned. And... We got, one day we were driving through the hills near where I live and I was, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to park over here at this uh, uh, hiking parking spot. So we did that. And I was like, let's go up the hill. And, and we, was, we went up the hill. It was two kilometers up, the, I measured later on Google Earth, two kilometers up the hill and two kilometers back. And I had no pain until like the last 200 meters mm -hmm. when my leg got a little tired. And I, st I remember I stood up on that hill and in another video you might see my wife do, talking about this. I stood up on that hill and I, I was crying because I, I'm still crying. Mm. Because I, you know, that was like a thing. I used to love hiking. Mm. And I was on top of a hill and I, I wasn't in pain. And so it seemed to me that uh, even without the medications, you know, this was the critical thing. And, and what, you kept inviting me come, to come down here for treatment. Exactly. And, and this is why I didn't come down. I kept thinking, I have to beat this without... And you could even do it. You, you could drive this long way. Yeah, I did. Uh, from your hometown yeah. to Dranstein. I didn't want to also because I was afraid of the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, but, but you did it and you arrived here and you had some pain when you arrived. Yeah, yeah you had so, some pain. Yeah, I don't in any way want to say I was cured when I came here. I still had serious problems. I still have serious problems. Mm -hmm. But 
not like the bottom I was at, you know. And so what was clear to me was over those three three months between St. Petersburg and a, a few couple weeks ago, I was improving and improving and improving again. And uh, remember the first night, one of the first nights, I said something like, uh, "I want to walk through Paris ten kilometers. That's my goal mm -hmm. without pain." And yeah. we, we laughed a little bit. You're like, "You, you yeah, want yeah, these yeah. big things?" Yeah, yeah. But the other day, I put together seven point five kilometers, yeah. and I returned, and my leg was functioning. Yeah. Um, and you know, so to me, without a doubt, we will talk about this in another yeah, video. Yeah. I mean, without a doubt. So this is, so I, really, I just wanted to discuss, you know, our history, you know, the, the treatments mm -hmm. I've tried, you know, the fact that there was significant improvement this year, but it wasn't cured. But you know, I feel like I'd only been going up three months. I think this is going to be a, a year and a half process mm -hmm. putting my body back together. I'm just going to keep doing what I was doing, change the diet, change the high, the high motion, high you know movement. The, the vitamins, the, 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 the dropping of the industrial yeah, fats, low carbohydrates. the daily exercise, I would say. I agree. That's yeah. critical. I, without a doubt. Without, mm -hmm. so, so then one last thing here. There was a woman in, in New Zealand who bought my, my uh, CRPS survival guide a few years ago. And she had a son who was yeah, exactly. desperate. She I, was I desperate. met her actually in New Zealand. Right. And this is what's interesting. So she wrote... She would write me several things and say, oh, thank you, you know, this, my son is uh, pain-free again, he's functioning again, the doctors mm -hmm. didn't know what to do, the physical therapist didn't know, know what to do, and we brought him in, and they're like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. he's pain-free. She said something like, they, they're like, wow, there really is a way to deal with this. I don't want to mm -hmm. say more than that. But she was, and she's written so many nice, amazing notes. Yeah, and I met her, and she was uh, just continuing uh, uh, and saying uh, it's amazing. She since did. I, yes, since I have changed the diet of my son, yeah. and he isn't eating any carbs anymore. Then she also had an uncle, and this is what she wrote about her uncle who had CRPS. I'm sure you you will have. Oh wait, hold on. My uncle has had CRPS too, and she it, sometimes she doesn't use punctuation. It's difficult to. So anyway, my uncle has CRPS too and has had it since he broke his leg 12 years ago. No one could tell him what it was. He was telling me about the pain on his visit a while, and everything he said was like Dylan. Dylan is the name of her son, so also at CRPS. I said to him, after he told me about the burning pain, I said, I reckon you, you, you have CRPS, and sure enough, once he told his doc, he's now got diagnosed with it, and I gave him the diet. And it worked, and he was so happy he couldn't believe he could put his foot down or, do lo or, or live as he used to. When he told me about the pain, I put your video on, he watched it, had lots of empathy for you. <clears throat> and was happy that he called in, but unfortunately he has blood cancer and is now battling that and, and trying to not have limbs cut off. He's going to move in with me, I'll put him back on the diet and at least get him his feet back again and try real hard to put those tumors on pause. I'm so glad you stayed on this earth, you're beautiful and without you many people would be so lost or maybe dead. You deserve a medal, thank God bless your soul and keep you well. So, you know, this is, I guess, why I'm back with the CRPS Survival Guide. For a few years, I didn't want to pub, uh, promote it because I quit the medications, which, which was kind of the half of the basis I wrote the book on. And I think you should uh, um, correct some chapters. Yeah. Not correct it, but yeah. um, uh, uh, write uh, some additional chapters. I will. Uh, because it is necessary to, uh, to keep up with the new... Um, knowledge yeah. you have gained yeah. now, that it is even possible uh, to improve uh, without medication yeah. and just by changing the diet, uh, just by a very uh, uh, strong rehabilitation uh, exercises and, uh, and uh, yeah, well, it's uh, as, as good as um, any medication uh, and I would say even better. Really? Interesting. But you have to be able to do it. And not everybody yeah, has the strength. I'm lucky. And, uh, yeah, I, I I fought hard for 20, 18 years to remain mobile. It was and it was never it was not easy sometimes. But the key thing was I wanted to get better without these medications, and that's because the, for example, this woman in New Zealand she couldn't she couldn't find a doctor who would prescribe it, and she couldn't afford the medications out of her own pocket. Of so to me, it was like I have to find a way for people to get better without. Without having to fly to Germany and you know and do this and that and find medications all over the world and you know I, so this is what the book is about and yeah. it's helped me now again and and so I'm gonna I'm promoting it again so here here we are. I, and I think again we talked several times like it's also my duty to get back out there with this book because I wish I would have had this book twenty years ago yeah yeah 
of course. I wish. But now, now you have had this disease and you still have it, but uh, now you can help other people. And that's, I think, something to... He keeps trying to convince yeah. me. <laughs> no, no, it helps other people. And yeah. just, you know, people have to have the disease yeah. uh, to be so much interested in it that uh, they start to research yeah. on their own and probably are become more knowledgeable than doctors. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's true. Uh, mm -hmm. All except with the exception of this fine individual, best pain doctor in Germany, in my opinion. No, so. thank you, thank you, thank you very much. But uh, uh, you see, uh, sometimes I even can remember better hydroxybutyrate. That's it. Oh, oh, but oh, in, God, in, in German, it's uh, better hydroxybutyrate. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, right. yeah. so yeah. we'll get back to with we'll, yeah. we'll come back with I'm sure some videos, but probably over Skype. So yeah. all right, nice to see you, and bye thank bye. you so much, and I thank you for stopping in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. See, See you later. I get my smartphone. Bye-bye. Yep. Yep. And uh, I have to drive my wife. Look, I'm, I'm getting up and I'm walking around the table, and this is a disaster normally. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Anyway, I don't want to waste your time with this anymore. So, Kati, sweetie pie, thank you so much for being here and talking about it. And we're done now. I think you wanted me to drive you somewhere now, don't you? Yeah. She wants to... She loves little towns here in southern Germany and wants to see another one now. So we're going to break this right here. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.